I first encountered turtles in Chennai, then Madras when I was a college student and we had a students group for the conservation of all of Ridley turtles. You know, so right away we started reading everything that we could get our hands on about sea turtles and this uh, leatherback was this, you know, really mysterious enigmatic creature. It didn't nest on the mainland coast and so we knew it nested in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. More than 10 years had passed since I first dreamt about seeing a leatherback when I finally you know, as part of a genetics project, was going to go out to the um, to the islands to collect uh, samples. So we ended up on at Galatia after a four-day ship journey from Port Blair, and then uh, we rode in an auto from Campbell Bay to the beach, at, which is 41 kilometers away, and that's the first of the two autos that one of the first two autos that had ever been used on those islands, uh, and had just arrived. Sure enough, uh, you know, the first night that we were there, uh, we were on the beach and. Uh, you know, there was this large, truly beautiful animal, but extraordinarily clumsy and ungainly on land, sort of hauling herself and grunting and breathing heavily, and uh, it was a magical moment. For us, immediately after the tsunami, there were, you know, we both at South Bay and, and at West Bay, the numbers were fairly low, but it looks like they've, they've stabilized at the levels they probably received before, and that's what our surveys of Galatia indicate as well, that numbers are back to those pre-tsunami levels. Pretty quickly, I mean, in the sense that within two or three years, the beaches had formed and uh, turtles were nesting there again. I mean, these guys have been around for millions of years, so I think natural disturbances like this, beaches getting destroyed by storms, by cyclones, by tsunamis, I think they're kind of used to that. But I think the most exciting finding, you know, research I came upon recently was that one of the turtles that we fitted a satellite transmitter to and which tracked her, I think, to, uh, uh, you know, Southeast Asia and perhaps to the western coast of Australia. And uh, she came back to nest, I think, six years later. We lost track of her when the transmitter died and then she turned up uh, so many years later. So uh, that was even more exciting because we're like, hey, you know, we last saw you, you know, when you were transmitting uh, <laughs> signals from uh, the west coast of Australia, and here you are again. So I think that was really pretty cool. The primary threats to uh, sea turtles are considered to be from direct take, you know, from the take of eggs, from the take of adults, and so on. And uh, a lot of the early effort for sea turtle conservation was towards stopping exploitation of turtles. And even in India, there were Tens of thousands of turtles were caught in, or at least were caught in Orissa and shipped to Calcutta for food. 50,000 a year, those kinds of numbers. So, a lot of the emphasis in the early years was really on stopping exploitation. Those have, in a sense, been so successful that many sea turtle populations around the world have bounced back. This is all largely good news, and what it sort of means is that sea turtles are resilient, they can bounce back from hits to their population. What they can't bounce back from is if their nesting habitats and other habitats are destroyed.